Awesome. Thank you, Maria. Um, and good, good evening, everyone. And thank you for coming to the second workshop today titled Data Processing. It's the second workshop of a series of three workshops in total we're doing for the Wisconsin um, UW Athletics Data Science Contest. The first one we did last week was on uh, web scraping, basically um, the way we're going to go about collecting the data we're going to do our analysis on. And today we're going to go to the next step, which is how we process the data and get it ready for analysis and visualization. So without any further ado, um, let's look at today's session outline. We're going to start by a quick introduction on, on why the steps we're going to be going over today are important, followed by introduction uh, into two particular software or libraries that we're going to be using. One of them is, is a Python library called GeoPy. We're going to talk about it shortly. And then the other one is a spot, uh, software for data visualization called Spotfire. And we're going to describe each and then go over the methods to install them and have them available to your, to your machines. And finally, after the, this short presentation, we're going to go into a live demo showing in depth how we're going to go about um, actually processing the data that we have using these tools. At the end, we're going to have a quick Q&A session. If anyone has any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. So uh, an introduction, why is data processing important? Of course, for any kind of project you're doing in various fields, um, you're always going to need to process data. Any data we get in a raw form it typically needs a lot of processing with us with data types, with removing outliers, with, with even like cleaning, um, like unclean data. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we need to do in, the, in, in order to be able to analyze the data and create meaningful visualizations. So this is the point of what we're doing here because the data we scraped last week, if, if any of you has already gotten the data and scraped it from the OSI, like we showed last week, you'll notice there's a lot of discrepancies, there's a lot of inconsistencies that we need to take care of, and that's what we're doing today. So what you learn is how we use, uh, as we mentioned, GeoPy for geocoding the data, which we will talk about what that is. And then the other thing is how to do some basic data processing for our project using a software called Spotfire. So for the first tool that we're gonna be using today, it's a Python library called GeoPy. And in our last workshop, we already have Python installed and we already started using it to import the data. So now the data, we already have it in, in Python. Even if not, we're going to show how we're going to load it back into Python and how we're going to use GeoPy to convert the hometown's names that we got from the data of the athletes' um, athletes' information from the websites into XY coordinates that we can use for your geographic analysis. And the uh, library we're going to be using, using for that purpose is GeoPy. It's a, it's, a famous, it's a popular library used to... Uh, make it easy to locate coordinates of addresses or cities or even any any name of any location or business. So this will be useful in, in multiple applications in particular for our, our case here. The way we go about installing this, if you have Python open right now, we can just run this command you see right here, which is pip install geopy. And that's all you need to do to have it installed uh, on your machine. Using either a command prompt or in Python, you can just run this command and it will install it for you. And it should not take more than a minute. So if you're watching this um, recorded, please pause right now and go ahead and install it. And if you're with us right now, uh, I think if you, if you open Python and run this command, uh, by the time we're over the slides, it should be installed. So that's as far as GeoPy. And then uh, we'll move on to the next tool we're going to be all going over today, which is Spotfire. So Spotfire is a data visualization and analytics software. Uh, it's, it's used in, in multiple industries, including finance, uh, oil and gas, and sports analytics. They use a lot of Formula One visualization uh, for the races. Uh, so we're using this particular software because it's very easy to use. It it's, doesn't require any programming knowledge. I, I noticed a lot of the, contest, the contestants we have in this in this uh, contest is their background is not necessarily in computer science. Uh, so we don't want to do something that is, is programming intensive. So we had uh, multiple options like Spotfire or Tableau multiple softwares that are, do not require that level of um, in-depth programming. This one was a more straightforward one we decided to go with. And it's produces really like interesting and it has a lot of capabilities that like we saw in the analysis file we showed in the introductory meeting for this contest. To have this tool installed, it's a very straightforward process. Just go to the Tipco Spotfire uh, website. I added the link here. You can just Google uh, Tipco Spotfire and you'll find the link for it. You choose the version suitable for your machine, and as soon as you download it, it's, it will um, open an installation file that you can just start installing from it. So it's a very straightforward process. If anyone has any problems with it, please feel free to um, email us or contact me right now or ask questions now. 
Oh, it's a, it's a very straightforward process. Actually, um, I'll show you right now. Actually, let me exit the slides and show you what it looks like. Um, when you come here, this is the typical Spotfire page. There's a link for a free trial. And once you download the free trial, it'll en enable you to work offline. So you only need a paid membership if you're working on some like online servers. But for the purpose of our project, the online demo would be sufficient. Um, that that's the last of the slides we have. Now we're gonna start um, actually processing data. We're gonna start using the tools we're discussing, starting with GeoPy to process data we already obtained from last week's workshop. Now, if you don't have if you don't have the data from last week's workshop ready yet, that's fine. Uh, you can just follow through right now, and then um, we're gonna use sample data that's not necessarily related to the project initially. So, if you don't have it, that's fine. The code is going to be the same. You just once you get the data, you can just use the same code. We're going to share it in the same GitHub page that I shared with you last time. You'll find the code there, and you just take it and replace the data we're going to use here with the data you actually scraped. Um, for those who could not find it in the GitHub page, um, this is it. We sent you an email last week with it. Uh, it's a uh, repository on my personal GitHub. You'll find in it the data from last week's workshop. And after today's workshop, we're going to add the code and any information that we discussed today into the same uh, folder here. So we will start right now um, processing the data that we got. Okay. So I'm loading right here a CSV file and that CSV is basically similar to what we have scraped in last week's workshop. It has the same information, the same column names and everything. So um, if you have done the code as we did last time, you will have a CSV that's um, stores the values or the data that you collected. You can now read it back into a, a data frame in, in Python. And that's what I did here. We use pandas library, which we discussed last time. So we can store the data frame, uh, load it into a variable we call the big 10. And here I'm just printing the header to see what it looks like. And of course, the only column we care about in this case is, is the birth city, right? Or the hometown or whatever you want to call it. Because it has city names that we're interested in processing or converting into um, coordinates, XY coordinates, right? And this is what we're gonna be using GeoPy for. Here's some description of the code. You can read at your own convenience, but I'll just go over the description myself. So the library you're using after you click pip install, after, after you uh, install GeoPy using the command we showed, you can now load the library or even not even start a library, but certain uh, methods from it. In this case, we import something called uh, nomi nominatim, which is uh, a geocoding uh, agent. It's, it's a free one that we can use, which enables us to do that conversion from address or city name into XY coordinates. Uh, for the other uh, method we import is distance. Don't worry about it for now. We'll be going over it at the end of the presentation. It's basically used to calculate distance between two different coordinates. So we initiate this geocator variable that we're going to be using uh, in the function that we use to convert the location to XY coordinates. And again, like you don't need to study this code in depth. Uh, all you need to understand here is that we're using this um, this library's method nominatum to convert the location to XY coordinates. And these are the steps that are done to get to that result, right? So this what this function does, we call it get that latitude and longitude. It gets fed the location name, whether it's an address or a city name. And it tries using the geolocator variable that we initiated here to get um, to convert the or geocode the address and get the XY coordinates. And here's some processing for the city names because we have some inconsistencies uh, in, in the data that we used here. And, and some of you, so, so if you follow the same steps we did in last week's um, workshop, you would not have to use this particular standardization of city names. But um, if you use a different method, uh, this might be useful for you because you want to standardize how, how this um, state's um, abbreviation versus our full name is, is included in your data. Um, for our case, we would not need it because we follow the same steps as last week's workshop. But I added it here because some of you might need it. So after we get this function now, let's try to run uh, the code on the data that we collected, right? So I have this variable called city data, which has all the city information that we also shared with you last week. Now let's try to get 
Next one, coordinates for it. We add it from here. So let's look what's doing. It's adding two columns. In this case, we change the table name because ours is called, um, we call it Big Ten. For the table Big Ten, I want to add two new columns, latitude and longitude, which are calculated using this method, right? And in this case, our Sendai city name is actually called Birth City, right? So let's use that here. So this is the line that's gonna add those coordinates, right? So what we're doing here is that we're introducing two new columns in the table. And the way we get them is, is through this method here, which is applying the function that we calculated to the birth city. So let's, let's see how that works. Until this runs, it's going to take some time because we have a lot of data set. Until it works, uh, we'll go over right now quickly. Uh, spot value. This will take some time because we have a lot of uh, data table. But until then, we're going to uh, start going over the processing side from Spotfire and how we're going to merge the two tables we got from the city's information, the socioeconomic information, with the data that includes uh, at least uh, hometowns. So uh, I'll... I'll Move the presentation to Spotify really quick, and it'll come back to this once it finishes running. Okay, what you should see right now is is the Spotify uh, software we just discussed. The analysis we did was on it, and, and so what we're looking at right now, what we call as a front end side, which is the data visuals. So this is what we'll be discussing in the next workshop. But for now, we're, we're going to be looking at the back end, how we process the data on Spotify side. After we geocode the data, this is what the table will look like. After we process everything and load it in Spotify, we'll get, We'll get a table that looks like this. It has the player's name, the position they play in, the weight and height, academic year, major, uh, the hometown, which will be um, scraped from their websites, and then the high schools, the year, the sport they play in, university, uh, gender, and and here are the coordinates that we just got. In addition to something called uh, what we also add, which is standardized location. And instead of just having different uh, formattings of the hometowns, like for example, this one, Price the three abbreviation as three three letter abbreviation. This one or Illinois. Others might do it differently. They do something like called Calif for California. You might see it written on many different formattings. So that's why we standardize it here. If you notice here, it's written um, in a set formatting for all the for, for all the data. We get this as a result of the code we just ran on Python, the GeoPy code. And once we have the data added, those columns added to that frame, we save into a file and we load it here in Spotfire. And the way we do that loading part is when you first open a new Spotfire, you will not have all this loaded. You'll have an empty page. And in that empty, empty page, you just go on data here. And you see the first option says as da uh, add data. And when you click on that, you get multiple options of where to get the data from. In our case, we process, we, we, we got the data on the Python dev, data frame. So we showed how we wrote that into a CSV file. So it's written, all the data we have should be stored in, in CSV files on your local machine. So if you have that file, locate, you know where it's location, you just come here, and like we showed, you click data, data, and you click add data, you go to browse local files. You go find that particular file that you saw the data at. When you click on it and you load it, you will have it in the back inside of Python, oh, of Spotfire, sorry. And it will look something like this. So now, um, even though we think we have everything we need to start visualizing, really not, we, we really don't yet because um, there are multiple things we need to take care of what we'll be looking at right now. Uh, we do have the XY coordinates, we're ready to create the maps. 
but for the locations, for the states and uh, cities, we need to do some extra processing here. Uh, for instance, you can see that some of them will have town, city, state, um, or country, U.S. in this case. Others might have zip codes. Others might have oh, be international addresses, so they would have like different formattings, different um, address formats, and so on. So we want to also like do more processing here, standardize the way that, or like at least get a city name and a country out of this. Because they're placed differently, they're separated by commas, so we already have an idea of how we split those apart. But we also want to be able to locate the city name and the country name. The way we do this is uh, we break them down into multiple columns. We keep splitting that column by commas until we can, until we, we basically cannot split anymore, until we have all the segments separated, right? So we created five additional columns. We call it state one, state two, state three, whatever. We, we can call them whatever, but the whole point is that we split that column into five separate ones. And in here, you can see, like, we already have some discrepancies. Uh, this column, for example, we call it state one. And in some values, it includes the state, and in others, it can include the country, and others can include the county. So it's really still inconsistent. And, and one way we decided to go about it is that we noticed that the last column in every single one of them is a country, right? Look at this one here. Um, it has, it has, it filled all five columns. And it's because it included town, city, county, state, and then country. So knowing that the last column is, is country would already give, give us an idea of how we can locate the city and the state. The state typically comes before the country. So we know that the last, so now we know two pieces of information. The last column is a country, and then the column before it is a state. So for instance, in this particular row, um, the country here is Jamaica, but we see there's no columns after it. So we don't look at any columns after it. We're only interested at the last column filled and the column right before it to get the country and the, and the state. And that leaves us with, with one more thing uh, we need to find, which is the city name. And let me show you how we go about this. Um, so for the city name, the way we did it is, after we selected this state and uh, country, it leaves us with two columns, the county and, and the city. And then for this particular formatting we got, the county's column already includes the word county. Like example, this one here, you can see in, in Illinois, Cook County. And it's consistent for all the other uh, rows uh, or the other data that we have. We always have an indicator for the county. So now we got everything. We got the country, we got the state, we got the county, and then the last one will be left, which is the city. So only now we're ready to do analysis on location because now we got basically the coordinates, the city name, the country name, the state. So with that, we know the data for location analysis is ready. We do some more processing here. Uh, for example, we have some some issues. Of course, you will always have a lot of things to do with the data. It's never going to be like too smooth to work with. For example, one thing we had to do is is the year column and this uh, had some values that were not declared as as proper. Uh, sorry, not not defined as proper variables. They're defined as string, as you can see here. So it's text, and we need it to be a numerical value so we can do all kinds of like continuous analysis or plots on it, because it's eventually it's an integer, right? So we need to do that conversion. And the way you do that on Spotfire, let me show you how you do that. So after you go to the column, the way to where we added that column, um, actually let me first show you how you add the column. Under the main table name, if you click on this plus sign. You get three options, add rows, add columns, and add transformation. So add rows and columns, we're going to look at them in a little bit. They're basically to add from external sources, from other tables than this one. If you add a column, if you want to add a column that is a calculation of something that's already existing in this table, or you want to do any other filtering or any other um, transformations on the table you have at hand, you basically add transformation. Add rows and columns are only for when you want to add um, external data. So let's click on Add Transformation. If 
So in this menu, you can see multiple transformations you can do on the data. You can calculate a new column, you can change a column name, you can change data type, exclude certain columns if you wanna make the data, data table smaller, filter rows if you wanna remove any, let's say particular country. Uh, you can normalize, that's what can use values. We're gonna talk about that later. And replace values if you have um, an error in the data that you wanna fix. So um, I'll show you how to do each one of them actually, because we will be using, it'll be very useful for you. So we're gonna start with calculating a new column. Let's say, um, once I select the transformation I'll add, or I wanna add, let's say it's a new column, I click insert. So I know I told you that um, Spotify is, is uh, almost a no programming uh, tool or software, but it has very basic uh, SQL uh, commands that you can do on it, uh, or line or codes, or functions, let's call them. So it's, it's, uh, it's the simplest of all, all, all programming languages. I'm sure a lot of you probably already know some basic uh, SQL commands. And even if you don't, if you have zero idea on how to do any programming, you can come here and just, then you're on the, on the right side, you see all the functions that you can use. And you click on any of them, let's say, I wanna see uh, what does, um, apps to this one. Well, it tells you, well, this one returns the absolute value of any input you feed it. And how do you use it? Use it like that, ABS, parentheses, and you put the value there. And that value can be a column name, which we'll be doing right now. So let's say I wanna do, um, let's say what columns we have. We have the coordinates, okay? Let's say I wanna, for some reason, some odd reason, I wanna add the coordinates with each other. So I click the latitude plus longitude. Let's call that column uh, coordinates sum, which makes, we're not gonna be using that one, but just show you how to add columns in buffer in case you need to add any. Sum. So you put the expression here. For column names, you have to put them in brackets. And for the operations, you can see the, the menu of all the possible uh, functions that you can use. What this will do is we'll take each value from latitude and add it to each value from longitude and put it in a new column that we name it here. We, in this case, called coordinates. So and if we click OK, I click OK again, I'll see now a new column added. And it's called coordinates. So. Of course, it's a useful call, uh, useless column. Uh, so uh, I'll just show you how the columns are added. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one. Uh, the one I'll actually show you how to do is is the split that we actually used. How do we split that standardized uh, uh, location name into all the five sub columns that we created? So let's show you how we did that. Let's start with the first split here. So the way the split function, so we use a function called split. And the way that works, if you're not sure how it works, you can just search for it here, click for split. And it explains to you exactly what it does and how you can use it. And the way this works is that if you have, let's say, um, uh, of course it works on the strings, right? On text value. And the way that works, you put the string uh, that you're trying to split in the first argument for the function. The second one is what's those arguments separated by. And then the last argument is that which side of this split value you're looking at. Are you looking to the left side of it or the right side of it? And in this case, we want to take the value that comes after the comma, uh, the comma. So you put number two. If you're looking at the value that comes before it, you put number one. So basically, you can only put one or two. We kept splitting those values for all the other columns, and we end up with um, the the city, state, and the county, as we saw before. We did some fixing for the weights as well because the weight column does include um, a text in it. Some of the values that we scraped uh, say the number 80 for weight, and then others say 80 LBS. And you want to trim those, um, any any strings that comes in the, uh, in, in the weight column because Challenge with some numeric analysis on it, and having having it as a text would not be useful for us. So in that case, we use something called the trim function. 
and the way the term function works is that basically move any white space or anything um spaces are in the, in, the, in the value that you have or in the column that you have so let's say how we how that works in this case for the weight column you search for the function trim so as you it does it to move um the beginning and end of a string uh if it has any white space at the beginning of the end of it to move those and then we added another function to it. So it's basically a function inside a function. So the output of whatever we trimmed in weight, we fit it to a function called left. And the function left basically takes the left side of a string. Let's say the word hello, for example, if you put left of hello and then put number two, it gives you the first two letters, which is in this case, H-E. So we're doing the same thing for weight because most weights we have, all the weights we have turn out to be three um, digits. We used left weight three, so we can eliminate anything that comes after, whether it's a string or a space or anything like that. So that left us with three digit weight for every single uh, value we have. We convert that into an integer because as we saw that we had it as a string and that gave us the weight variable that we use for analysis. Another thing we can do is, is change a data type. Instead of doing it as a function like you did before, you can add a transformation and then select the change data type from here. And if you have any column that is of their own type, you can see all the columns that you have and what their type is, right? So name is a string, which is what we need it to be. Position is a string, it's also letters. Um, height is a string, we will come back to that because we're gonna need to do conversion on it. Height will be a string because it's written in all the that we have as, let's say six, um, apostrophe and then some number, another double apostrophe. So um, for that reason, we always start that as a string. We need to extract those digits and, and convert them to a standardized unit, whether it's inches or centimeters, or as, as long as it's one, one unit that we can uh, do numerical analysis on. Uh, weight is a string, we just converted it into uh, an into, uh, uh, integer. Academic year, uh, it's a string because it's freshman, junior, whatever it is, um, it's all um, it's a string, it's not a numerical value. Uh, latitude and longitude are real numbers. Uh, weights that we just fixed is this integer. It just shows you all the data types and enables you to change types if needed. Another thing we can do is filter rows. Uh, this is very important, you'll probably be using it a lot either here on the front end side, which will be shown next week, but to filter rows from the back end side or the table side, um, you select the transformation filter rows and you click insert. Let's say I want to remove, um, I want to remove anyone who is, um, let's say, from the states of Wisconsin. So do this, do, to do, uh, to, to filter, of course, you would, generates a Boolean variable. So it's either true or false, right? So if I do a state equal Wisconsin, that means the state has to be equal Wisconsin to be included. And if it's not, if it's false, it will be removed. If I wanna do the opposite, where I wanna remove Wisconsin and keep all the other states, I'll do this. In Spotfire, this sign is maybe it's not equal versus just one equal sign, which just means equal. If I do not equal Wisconsin, and I do the filter, And look at this. You went down from 83,000 uh, rows down to 81,000. So we lost about 2,000 athletes who were from Wisconsin. And of course, that's a filter we're not going to be using in particular, but let's show you how to use the filtering mechanism as well. You can delete that filter so we can have our data complete. So now we're gonna add the other data, which is the socioeconomic data. And that we shared with you last week in, in the GitHub page. You can just go ahead and download it. Uh, 
in this case, uh, once you download it, it will be a CSV file we can store on your machine. And once you download that CSV file, you will load it here on Spotfire. Again, the same way we did load it the first day. The way you would go about it is data, and you click add data, and then browse file, you'll find the CSV. You just load it like we did for the first table. However, it will be separated into a different um, uh, table, basically. So you want to combine both. You want to get that information to this table, right? So this is the data that we gave you last week for the cities. We loaded it here, but as you can see, it's separated from the main one that we were doing. We we're trying to do the analysis on, right? This one, all it has is city name, state, and median income, percent, um, minority, and population, uh, population count, and so on. It doesn't have the coordinates, the player's information, any of that. So how do we take this data and combine it with our player information? So we go back to our player information table. What we're trying to do is bring for each row, for each student, we want to have their hometown's information, right? Their hometown's median income, their hometown average um, education level, and so on. So how do we do that? So what we're trying to do is to get the values from the other table into this one. So as we mentioned, we're going to be adding uh, columns in this case from a different table. Right? So we click on this plus sign, you see next to the table that we loaded, and then click add columns. And now it asks you, where do you want to add the columns from? So since we already have that table loaded, and we call that in this case, the cities, um, we click on the table that we loaded that has the city information. And now it tells me, now select which columns you want to add. So we're going to modify those settings. Let's look at settings for added columns. So I'm going to tell it to do is like, we're going to create a match between the two tables, right? It cannot just bring any information from the other table to this one. We're going to have to have a certain match. What we're going to tell it to do is, like, look for the city name and the state name. Match them from both tables. And if you find from my player's information table, let's say I have someone who's from Chicago, Illinois. So if you match Chicago, Chicago, and Illinois from with Illinois from both tables, whatever information you find about Chicago from the city information table, bring it to my player's information table. And the way you do that is that you create the match between the two tables and you select what columns you want to bring from that second one. In this case, let's say you want to bring the median income. I'm going to deselect everything. I'm only going to bring the median income of the cities based on the match we created here. And the last thing you can edit in the settings is called the join settings. And in this case, um, this is a, I'll say like, like a database administration of like, like it's more like databases or how do you do um, manage databases? Uh, it's just a very deep topic, but I'm not going to go over it in this workshop. But for the purpose of our project, all you're going to need to do is a lift single match. And what that means is that I want you to keep the player's information table as it is and only bring the rows that match with these columns, with these rows. I don't want you to add any new rows from my player's information table. And this is what it means by left single match. We gotta click click OK here. Click OK again. And now what I'm gonna get is a column that has the median income for all the cities um, of my the student athletes that we got. As you can see, the median income column was added to my table. And we do the same thing for all the socioeconomic uh, data, including me. So we added the media income. Same thing will be done for uh, anything else that you want to add. So for us, we added, um, as you saw in the dashboard here, what we have was we have um, education um, information, where the average education level in the hometowns. We had um, household size, average household size per hometown. Uh -oh average minor, minority or, or majority, and average age distribution or average age of the hometowns. And of course, there are many more that you can get from the same API we shared with you last week. Uh, this is over um, hundreds of, of variables you can add from the API that you can uh, investigate yourself. Um, the ones we added are just, uh, we added um, most, I'll say like the ones we saw right now but there are many others you can add and you do the same steps that we did here to add them into the player's information table. 
one last thing we'll go over uh, is is for the map mapping process. How do we get the satellite image here? How do we get the map to the United States and it's interactive? Uh, the way you would do that is is you add a map chart and Spotfire. Once you click on the map chart, it will give you it will auto fill it with some layers, and you would want to remove those layers. Let's expand it. So think of it as giving you an empty map, right? And you're gonna go to properties and then layers and remove all layer all the layers you have here. Right. So as you see, it added two different layers. The first one is the map layer that would shows the map in the background. And that's added automatically. And the second one is the coordinates from the data that we have. And it did that, it did that automatically right now uh, uh, as well, because, well, uh, Spotfire has some, uh, so like, advanced settings that allows it to, uh, basically, it guesses what you're trying to visualize. And since we have XY coordinates in the map, it guessed on its own that, hey, you're probably going to want to look at that map, so I'll make it automatically. That's what I did here. But in case it doesn't, the way you would go about it is you would go add a marker layer, select the table that we have the coordinates at, which in this case we call it compiled and you coded. You go to positioning and you select that second uh, setting, which is coordinate columns, because we have the coordinate columns. And once you select that, it tells you, like, hey, if you have the coordinate columns, show me where they are or give me. Or, pick the columns that have those coordinates. For x, uh, x coordinates or longitude, we call the column longitude, so self-explanatory. And same thing for latitude. <clears throat> Once we select those, the map will be created um, as we see it right here. Uh, more on the visualization will be, uh, this is the topic of our next workshop, but I just want um, to show how we can get um, the source of the map for this uh, workshop. So um, I think that covers everything we want to talk about in this workshop. Um, I believe uh, most of you will be watching this lecture um, or this workshop recorded. So if any of you have questions, please feel free to email me. Um, and if any of you have finished already the, the, the web scraping from last week, please contact us. We want to know, um, see if we can like maybe help you move to the next step, which is this one. Uh, we will do. We will be having workshops in November. Will you guys come and then um, work on those as groups? I will be with you, helping you through that progress. So don't feel left behind if you did not finish the first workshop content or this ones. Um, I think that's it um, for today's workshop. And thank you for watching. Uh, I think I'll hand it over to you, Maria. Thanks everyone. We'll be sure to get this posted. And as Osama mentioned, if you have any questions, please feel free to email myself or Osama and we'll get those answered. Looking forward to the next one. Thank you.